Doug Bowden walked away from a six-figure job as a corporate lawyer to help build an ice cream company. He didn't have experience in the food and beverage industry or a backup plan if things didn't go well. But Bowden took the leap. As the president and chief operating officer of Halo Top Creamery, Bowden helped the company go from a struggling startup to a viral sensation, raking in some $350 million in sales annually. Here's how we got here. I grew up in small town Virginia. My dad uh, was an attorney and then a judge. Uh, my mom is a professor at the University of Virginia. And I think the, the best things that they taught me growing up were uh, really just the value of hard work. You know, dad always said 99% of the luckiest people in the world are the hardest workers in the world. And that really resonated with me. I went to uh, Georgetown University in Washington, DC. I doubled majored in math and theology while I was there. I decided to go to law school um, probably my junior year of college. I thought law school would be a good way to, you know, kind of delay uh, my entry into uh, the, the career life of, you know, the, the nine to six and, you know, wearing business casual clothes instead of the sweatpants that I prefer. It all starts with sweatpants. <laughs> all starts with sweatpants. I didn't have student debt coming out of college, so I took out ultimately about $200,000 in student loans um, to pay for my three years at law school. When I graduated law school, I moved all the way across the country, and the law firm job I got, I think the base salary was $160,000. And within the first couple of months, I knew it wasn't for me. I was told when to work, where to work, how to work, and I didn't like that. I think I knew I was an entrepreneur uh, very early on, it, just in terms of I, I, I cannot be told what to do. I, I need to be able to do it my own way. If that's your personality, then you're an entrepreneur. So Halo Top was started by my co-founder, Justin Wolverton, in his home kitchen. We met um, when I first moved to LA at a lawyer basketball league. He brought it to market and was, you know, hand delivering to a few stores in LA and, and you know, and then it was starting to get some traction. We've got red velvet cake. Oh, I really like this one too. Halo Top's where it's at. I'm gonna need to place an order for about 1,600 of these things. It basically got so big that he needed to bring on a business partner and I joined him. That was early 2013 and, and we haven't looked back since. Neither my partner nor myself knew anything about the food industry, about the ice cream industry, about the frozen industry. We had to essentially invent the wheel every single time uh, because we didn't know anything. We had to do everything, and that's everything from the high-level strategic direction and vision. It is time for ice cream. What's good? To, you know, creating invoices and, and, and purchase orders and, you know, shipping documents, you know, all the the, the, the not sexy stuff about a startup. Early on, the, the company had a number of, uh, of really tough years. Um, we were losing money every month. We got discontinued at, at multiple stores. Um, the product wasn't as resilient as it needed to be through the supply chain, so the customer experience with it wasn't great. Customer retention wasn't great. The packaging wasn't great. You have rent, you do have student loans, you're racking up credit card debt, you're, you're personally bankrupt um, if anything happens with the company. I won't lie, I mean, did, did, we, did we have doubts? Did, did we think, you know, hey, this might not work, we might have to do something else? Absolutely. We had both left, you know, ultimately lucrative legal careers to, to pursue this, and those weren't, certainly weren't waiting for us to come back to years later. But you, you ultimately have faith, you'll figure it out no matter what happens. I think one important thing to note um, that often is, is missed in, when entrepreneurs talk about the success of their business is, is luck. You can have the best idea, you can be the hardest, smartest worker, and it still could fail. And so for us, we got two lucky PR hits. We had a GQ article and a BuzzFeed article back to back in early January 2016. And if they didn't hit exactly when they hit, we wouldn't be sitting here talking. And that really put us over the top and that started the snowball um, that has continued to this day. I think the hardest thing is taking the leap. I can see why a lot of people would think it's a hard decision when you have $200,000 in debt. You're gonna give up this ridiculously high paying job to essentially make no money and take a flyer on a startup company that you hope pays off. It's really hard, it's risky it, to leave money on the table. Uh, you don't have a 401k, you don't have retirement, you might have a family, you might have a mortgage. There's all these reasons not to do it, but if you have faith in yourself and faith in your concept, take the leap. It's the hardest part. Uh, I don't think you'll regret it. If you're anything like me, uh, even if Halo Top had failed and at our worst day at Halo Top, we always said it's better than our best day at the law firm.